Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. Silver Diadem from the Bronze Age. Let's explore. This is a story from archaeology.org and it is a fascinating find from over 3,700 years ago. And it just goes to show you how uh, much precious metals played a part of everyday lives, and not just everyday lives, but those of the rich and powerful at the time. According to a New York Times report, a 3,700-year-old 3, tomb holding the remains of a man and woman has been found in southeastern Spain at the El Arg Argar site of La Alamaloya. Their bodies were placed in an ovoid jar under the floor of a large hall lined with benches that featured a podium before a hearth that provided warmth and light. Archaeologist Cristina uh, Riuet Herrada of the Autonomous University of Barcelona said that the man, who died in his 30s, wore flared gold ear plugs and a silver ring. A copper dagger with four silver rivets was found near his remains. Uh, so already we see that the three big metals, gold, silver, and copper, uh, were prominently featured here in this burial. Uh, the woman was in her 20s when she died. She had a shortened, fused spine a stunted left thumb, and may have died of tuberculosis. She was buried wearing silver spirals in her hair, silver earlobe plugs with silver spirals, a silver bracelet, a silver ring, and on her head, a silver diadem, whose disc would have covered the tip of her nose. And here we can see uh, this uh, image here shows that. Wow. Um... Riuet Harada suggested that the elite couple may have held power in different realms of the Bronze Age society. DNA testing of the remains of an infant discovered under another building at the site showed that the deceased were parents of this child, she added. The original story um, is, researches antiquity and... Uh, there is also, also some concern about fakes in the Bronze Age of Spain. I don't know if this story will allow us to read it or not, but here we see it here from the New York Times. Um, this is uh, gives a little better image here of the of the piece. Wow, fascinating indeed. It survived all of these years. Silver diadem recovered from the 3,700-year-old grave in this archaeological site in Spain. Uh, something else, and, uh, um, and the story goes into uh, greater detail here. On or around were sublime silver emblems of wealth and power. And it talked about the silver spirals, the ear lobe plugs, and here we see uh, the interior showing the bones and some of these artifacts. Just something to see, history and how gold and silver played a part and what is left from this time, bones and metals, bones and precious metals. There you can see something adorning here the head of the person there. Fascinating. Here are the golden earlobe tunnel plugs found in the tomb, among many others. Uh, I, and it says that she would have shimmered in life. Imagine the diadem with a disc going down to the tip of her nose, uh, said Christine uh, Roulette Harada, the ar an archaeologist and professor of prehistory at the Autonomous University of Barcelona, and one of the discoverers of the burial. It's shining. You could actually see yourself in the disc framing the eyes of that woman. It would be a very, very impressive thing to see. And the ability of somebody uh, to be reflected, their face in another face, would have been something shocking. It is pretty something. We talk about it here when we show precious metals, silver being the most reflective metal uh, on the periodic table. It would have certainly sent a message for sure. The sound of her would have been dramatic too. Think about the noise, the clink, 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 the clank, clank, clank. 
because it's silver against silver in these very large earlobes, said uh, Rehet Haranas, and that would make for a remarkable person. Uh, yes, indeed. And, and of course, you know, the man who had been interred with his own fineries, including flare and gold plugs in his ears, just imagine what it would have been like to walk up to somebody in that time period to see their, um, their status from the medals that they hold. And I think it's a story that we really uh, can take and uh, embrace in this day and age here in 2021. Well, what is it about? What are we here about? Uh, these medals that, have, that are ancient and in these societies, well, people continue now. We, and even though we are somewhat of a minority in the, in the space of the all the different asset classes, investments, and, and uh, wealth, uh, um, tools out there and status symbols of wealth out there. I believe the ultimate status of wealth is the preservation of what you already have. And that's why we hold gold and silver. And some, you can get them in jewelry form. But we also like the clickety-clickety and the clank-clank of actual silver and gold coins. Uh, yes, indeed. Bullion that we hold um, because it is self-evident that uh, we are preserving our wealth. Um, the story continues here, like their contemporaries, such as the Minoans of Crete, the Wessex of Britain, and the Unitites of Central Europe. The Agarics had the hallmarks of a state society with a ruling bureaucracy, geopolitical boundaries, complex settlement systems, and urban centers with monumental structures. They had divisions of labor and class distinctions that persisted after death based on the wide disparity of grave goods discovered at archaeological sites. While most of these symptoms have long been considered deeply patriarchal, the double burial of La Amaloloya uh, and other Argaric graves are making archaeologists reconsider life in ancient Iberia. Uh, was she... The one yielding the power, wielding the power, rather? Was she a symbol of power but held none of her own? Did they share power or wield it in different realms? They were buried beneath the floor of a great hall, where long benches lined the walls, and a podium stood before a hearth meant for warmth and light, not for cooking. The space was big enough to hold about 50 people. There have been hundreds of El Argar buildings excavated, uh, and this one is unique. It's quite clearly a building specialized in politics, Dr. Rahuet Harada said. And there we see an aerial view of the site itself. Fascinating. Archaeology is a really fascinating science. It's amazing what's being discovered that has helped to shape and rewrite history. And I talked about the infant um, child together um, that they had and was found. And... In this culture, girls were given um, grave goods in an earlier age than boys were, and indicating that they were considered women before boys were considered men. And diadems are exclusively found with women, and the graves hold a richer variety of valuable goods. Uh, so there you go. I was just tell you, women stackers, be encouraged by this. You adorn yourselves with not only jewelry, but also to have... Uh, and fascinating and interesting precious metals uh, items out there for sure. As for the power structure the two occupied, uh, the doctor suggested that perhaps they held potency in different realms. And it was said here that some male elite warriors were buried with swords. And who knows, maybe some of those handles could have been made of silver or gold or bronze. Uh, fascinating indeed. Um, but the suggest that perhaps, you know, women could have been political rulers. And uh, it says that they were similar to some of the Iroquois, with women holding political and decision-making power, including over matters matters of chieftain, war and justed, justice, but men being control of the military. These intriguing ideas fit into an emerging body of research from various archaeological studies in Europe that are re-examining female power during the Bronze Age. The fact that most of the grave goods, including all of those made of silver, were associated with the female clearly points to an individual that was considered highly important. Um, 
And uh, and if not anything as far as for women, it just means that, you know, she was the wife of a prominent figure and probably held some stature uh, for sure. Highly respected and uh, sought after individual and, uh, and adored individual for sure. But uh, it just goes to show you silver, gold, bronze, status symbols. Indeed. Now, in this day and age, uh, people frown upon those who hold gold and silver. It seems like we're kind of uh, looked at as, uh, as um, conspiracy theorists and like. But you know what? Um, when it's all said and done, uh, over the course of history, silver and gold, and, and even to some extent we're seeing copper uh, move into some of that category, well, they preserve your wealth. They do preserve your wealth. And, uh, and that's a great status to have, to have something that is um, wealth preserving out there for sure. And so that's why stories like this I like to feature on this channel because you don't know. I mean, it's it's neat to see. I think it should encourage us all that we're doing the right thing and accumulating these metals in so many different forms and so many different styles and ways. And um, and this aspect here, look at these uh, gold uh, hoops here, uh, eloquently crafted for that long ago. Just amazing how it's been hammered out and thin to be able to serve a purpose. A utilitarian purpose but also to shine brightly uh, for sure and uh, here again is that diadem it is kind of amazing that it looks obviously kind of crusted up here but uh, you know what we know there's silver there and back during the time that would have adorned uh, and would have been very highly reflective you imagine if somebody wore something like that today and they would certainly get looks and stares a reflective silver diadem that came down and had a, a large piece that covered over the top of the nose. Uh, just amazing how that would be walking out in public with something like that. The diadem from the Bronze Age. And what is your diadem for the modern age? I believe for us, that adornment is the uh, silver pieces that we accumulate for our stacks. The gold coins and, and rounds and bars that we accumulate for our stack. And even though we may not wear them, and we should be very careful about who we tell about them, I believe it does give us a sense of uh, comfort um, and a sense of, um, of uh, purpose. And not only that, but more importantly, a sense of uh, being able to sleep at night, knowing that we're doing the right thing by accumulating these metals um, so that we can feel protected from the modern age of, uh, of modern monetary theory out there. So there you have it. Uh, Fascinating indeed. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And what is your diadem? What is what is the one thing that uh, uh, a certain piece that represents uh, what you believe in your collection as far as silver um, and gold out there? Be very curious to know. For me, I think it's any silver or gold piece that represents the idea of of liberty which is government sanctioned or government recognized freedom rather, uh, those are what really uh, stand out to me. And what better freedom do we have than when we have uh, money that is independent of all the institutions and the establishments of the day? To me, that sends a powerful message and that is empowering. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch. And encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.